Last time in this series, we looked at how the 2001 NASCAR Winston Cup season would have played out had the current playoff system been in place. Today, we're going to travel back two decades from the current year to look back at the turn of the millennium, 2000. Remember that this is just a hypothetical scenario. I know that they would have raced differently had the system been in place in 2000. This is just for fun, so, you know, don't come to the comments with a stick up your ass. Now, with that being said, let's jump into it and see what the 2000 NASCAR Winston Cup playoff grid would look like. Starting off, we have Dale Jarrett, who makes it in off the 2000 Daytona 500 victory. Bobby Labonte would get in next after winning at The Rock, The Brickyard, and The Lady in Black. Jeff Burton would punch his ticket in with a win at Las Vegas. After a thrilling victory at Atlanta, Dale Earnhardt would get in. Ward Burton entered in after a win at Darlington as well. Rusty Wallace would make it in with more wins than anyone. They would come from a Bristol sweep, Pocono, and Michigan. Rookie sensation Dale Earnhardt Jr. also got in after scoring his first two career wins, those coming at Texas and Richmond. Mark Martin could make it in as well after conquering Martinsville. Jeff Gordon would take up a spot in the grid after scoring victories at Talladega and Sonoma. Jeremy Mayfield punched his ticket in with a win at Fontana and then backed it up by intimidating the Intimidator at Pocono. Under the radar rookie Matt Kenseth made it in after getting his first career victory, coming in the 2000 Coca-Cola 600. Tony Stewart also got in the big show with wins at Dover, Michigan, and New Hampshire. And last but not least, the last guy to get in off of wins would be Steve Park, who moved in by scoring a victory for the first time in his Cup Series career at Watkins Glen. With that being 13 drivers making it in off of wins, the playoffs needed three more to make it in off of points. And these drivers would be as follows. Ricky Rudd, who would easily make it in with enough points, so that spot's taken there. Mike Skinner. He would get in next, and he made it in pretty securely as well. But the last spot would be decided between Kenny Schrader and Johnny Benson. Benson entered the last race of the regular season inside the top 16, but due to having a DNF in the Southern 500, with a finish of 38th, he was beat out by Schrader, who finished 16th. So that's the grid for the 2000 NASCAR Winston Cup playoffs. First round would be made up of events at Richmond, New Hampshire, and Dover Downs. At Richmond, the difference in results were night and day, and Jeremy Mayfield and Mike Skinner would have accidents, plunging them below the cut line. Rookie Matt Kenseth would lose an engine and finish 32nd, putting him below as well. Meanwhile, at the front, playoff drivers like Tony Stewart, Jeff Burton, Steve Park, Mark Martin, and Dale Earnhardt help make up the top six finishers, but none could catch the 24. After Richmond, the playoff bubble would look like this. The next week, the series would move on to New Hampshire. Due to the recent tragedies of the deaths of both Adam Petty and Kenny Irwin Jr., NASCAR had restricted plates put on the cars at the track. This created an event that was limiting in the amount of passing and had a single example of domination as Jeff Burton led every lap on the way to victory. Among many playoff drivers, crashes epitomized the day. Jeremy Mayfield, Steve Park, Dale Jr., and Ward Burton all crashed out, putting them right at or below the cut line leaving the track. Two drivers locked up spots into the round of 12 a week early. Those two would be Bobby Labonte and Rusty Wallace. Labonte finished second and also had a third and second place finish in each of the stages, while Wallace finished fifth along with finishing fourth and fifth in the stages. Leaving New Hampshire, the points looked like this. These would be the points as the Cup Series would move on to the round of 16 finale at Dover. The difference between those that moved on to the round of 12 and those who didn't was huge. Ward Burton crashed out early, while Jeremy Mayfield's final hopes were dashed by engine woes. While Kenseth and Earnhardt Jr. managed to run inside the top 20 and earned stage points over Kenny Schrader, who would be passed and eliminated after limping home in 30th. Meanwhile, Mike Skinner could not make up his 24-point gap. Dale Jr. was the guy he needed to pass, and he needed 24 points to make up the gap. Jr. got 22 total points in the race. Skinner got 33. 
This would mean that he would miss by 13 points. And heading into the round of 12, the grid reset like this. This round would be more treacherous as it took place at Martinsville, then Charlotte, and the final race of this round would finish out at the wildcard track, Talladega. Starting out at Martinsville. Martinsville was a rookie-killing race as Dale Jr. and Matt Kenseth both finished below 34th. This plunged them immediately into must-win territory. Up front, Tony Stewart won over Dale Earnhardt, Jeff Burton, Ricky Rudd, and Jeff Gordon. So heading to Lowe's, the standings look like this, and crashes would take a toll on the playoff drivers. He's also in the hunt for position. Oh, Rusty Wallace, Dale Jarrett. Jarrett is in the wreck. Turn four. Gordon is in the wreck. Gordon. Hard hit for Dale Jarrett. Look at the left side of his car. That's the only good part of this, watching him move around inside that car. With that going on, there was an intense fight for the lead between Bobby Labonte, Ricky Rudd, Tony Stewart, and Dale Earnhardt. Rudd and Stewart wouldn't be able to keep up with the 18 and 3, and Earnhardt would fall back to 11th after he broke a shock, leaving Labonte to seal up a spot in the round of 8. Heading to Talladega, the grid looked like this. And Talladega is always a wild card, but this race was especially weird and wild. The race opened up with 104 lap green flag run. There also were no real big ones. And as the laps wound down, rookie Dale Jr. was leading in a must win race. With five to go, he led, while 10 of the 12 playoff drivers were still on the lead lap. If one crashed, they could finish as low as 35th. A driver on the border of missing the next round was actually Dale Earnhardt in 20th. He would convert this into the charge of a lifetime. With the laps closing down, the grid would be made up and a legend would win again. Wow. You see motion. He's motioning the 55 car of Kenny Wallace to give me a bump. Come on, Kenny, give me a jump. And Earnhardt is going for the lead. And listen to this crowd of 170,000 strong. Richard Tungus makes his car win in round two as he comes for the white flag. His teammate, Joe Nemechek. Nemechek was the pole center. And Kenny Wallace has likewise never won a Winston Cup race. Three Chevrolets on the final lap at Talladega. 2.7 million and a million dollar bonus for Dale Earnhardt if he can hang on. The no ball five contender, Mr. Restricted Race. Dale Earnhardt comes down and will take his tenth career victory. Dale Jarrett, Matt Kenseth, and Dale Jr. all missed out and would be joined by Steve Park, whose 19th place finish would not be enough and would be surpassed with Jeff Gordon finishing fourth. Heading into the round of eight, the points grid reset for the final time with playoff points. The round of eight would be made up of races at The Rock, Phoenix, and Homestead. No current playoff driver would win at The Rock as Dale Jarrett nabbed the win. Mark Martin would be the first to go behind the eight ball. Right here, he'll run in the back of Skinner. Uh -huh. into oh. The, oh, into the outside wall, very hard. Jeff Gordon, Ricky Rudd, Jeff Burton, and Rusty Wallace all got top tens while Dale Earnhardt ran 17th. Leaving the rock, the playoff grid looked like this. Phoenix would be different as Jeff Burton would become the first to lock up a spot in the final four with a win. Rusty Wallace also helped his case with another top five and 18 stage points. The cut line would tighten between three drivers, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, and Bobby Labonte. Labonte finished fifth and Gordon finished seventh, and this outpaced Stewart's 14th and heading to Miami, the cut line would look like this. Tony Stewart wouldn't have to worry about points as he won the race after leading 166 of 267 laps. Jesus Christ, that's domination.
This left two open spots that would be decided between three drivers as Dale Earnhardt and Mark Martin had fallen too far behind. Jeff Gordon scored a 7th place finish, but it wasn't enough as Rusty Wallace's 15th place easily got him in. And this left it up to Gordon and Labani as Rudd was too far back as well. Labani finished 4th and, with 10 stage points, helped him beat Gordon out by a mere 4 points. So heading to Atlanta, the final four was set, and it was Jeff Burton in the 99 Sitco Ford. It was Tony Stewart in the number 20 Home Depot Pontiac. It was Rusty Wallace in the number 2 Miller Light Ford, and Bobby Labonte in the number 18 Interstate Batteries Pontiac. Each of the four started in different areas of the field, Burton in 37th, Stewart in 17th, Wallace in 20th, and Labonte in 9th. The higher starting spot for the Superior 18 was a huge advantage, as Labonte led for most of the day over the Final Four. The first season-ending problem came for Tony Stewart at just lap 111. Tony Stewart, oh, Tony Stewart is in the wall. Looks like he has, looks like the right front tire has gone flat on the car. Right here on one and three. Oh, he's out. There he is. Oh, he's slowed up. The winningest driver in NASCAR Winston Cup competition this year, Tony Stewart, has crashed, bringing out our sixth caution of the afternoon. Stewart would DNF, and his final finish of the 2000 season would be 38th. Jeff Burton would fade as well, finishing 12th. And this left the title to be decided between Rusty Wallace and Bobby Labonte. Wallace led Labonte with five seconds, with only 14 to go. All he needed was for the race to go green to the finish. And after all, it had been 177 laps since the last caution. Smoking a crash in the back oh. oh. Rusty barely missed the wreck. Now, his and all the other pit crews were in the spotlight. Rusty would take two tires, while Labonte would take four. They would restart with seven laps remaining. Wallace in third, Labonte in seventh. See you later, Ned. All right, pace car's about off. We're just about to settle this on the racetrack. Rusty laying back for that great start, but maybe he pass on the inside. Blaney gets way up high on the track and gets loose, and look at him charge toward the front of the field as Nadu. And here comes Labonte, the 18 car with four fresh tires. And look what a run he has. Do what you want. Do what you want. Yeah, you want to stay out front. Bobby and Pamela do protect your bottom. Nadu takes the lead down the back stretch. Labonte comes, tries to come to second. Ward Burton, however. Bobby Labonte would be the 2000 NASCAR Winston Cup playoff champion. Just as in real life, he would be crowned the title champion. The only difference is how close the final standings would be. The final four would be made up of two Fords and two Pontiacs. They would be made up of eight of the 34 races won, and the grid overall won 33 of the 34 races total. Of the top 10 in the playoffs, only one didn't finish there in real life, that being 8th place Steve Park. The biggest improvement finish would definitely have to be from Jeremy Mayfield, who finished 13th in the playoffs while finishing 24th in real life. The biggest losers would be Dale Earnhardt and Dale Jarrett. Earnhardt finished 2nd in real life but 6th in the playoffs, while Jarrett was 4th in real life but finished 10th in the playoffs. Two rookies made it in the grid, those being Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Matt Kenseth. Kenseth's 14th getting the best of Jr.'s 15th. Well, that's about it, though. I want to hear from you. What did you think of the 2000 playoffs? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. We have two more of these playoff what-ifs left to go. Let's end on a high note. So, until next time, have a good one.